Hi, and welcome to another episode of Sony's Pro Audio Files. My name is Andy Munitz, Product Manager for Sony's Professional Audio Division. And in this video, we'll go into the specific operation and features of one of the latest models added to our UWPD wireless microphone series, the two-channel URX P41D portable receiver. For many years, the concept of a high-quality, small, two-channel, battery-operated receiver has been a goal of our designers. And with the introduction of the URX P41D, we've been able to bring additional new features and a new smaller size to this UWPD fourth-generation series two-channel wireless receiver model. So, if you already have the URX P41D or are just looking to learn more about it, this video should give you lots of information on how to simply operate it and perhaps introduce you to some of its unique features and design benefits that the UWPD product family is known for. So let's take a look. The URX P41D is a two-channel portable camera mount receiver, but has some very interesting and unique capabilities that we'll talk about in just a bit. The UWPD series is capable of tuning in up to 2,772 channels, covering a very wide tuning range of up to 12 UHF TV channels, or 72 megahertz, and allows for very easy scanning and both NFC and infrared syncing of your receiver and transmitters for finding and setting the best and quietest channel available for each of the two channels every time you use it. The series also employs digital signal processing, or DSP, of the audio to ensure great sound and preservation of the transient response of your audio signals. The URX P41D receiver integrates with many styles and brands of cameras, but also integrates in a unique way with many of Sony's PXW series of Pro camcorders, as well as Alpha series mirrorless cameras, through the use of Sony's MI, or multi-interface shoe. This allows for a very quick and simple method of attaching UWPD receivers to these MI shoe enabled cameras, allowing for dual channel audio from the URX P41D to route directly down through the SMAD P5 dual channel MI shoe adapter into the camera and even do so digitally with many of these cameras without the need for external XLR cables. And it even allows for power to come up through the shoe from the camera's battery to power the URX P41D receiver without the need for using internal batteries. This can even lighten things up a bit, making your camera rig a bit less heavy. Very useful capability, especially for run and gun applications. By the way, two mini to XLR and dual mini to stereo mini cables are included with the receiver for connecting to most styles of cameras, as well as a cold shoe mount. The unit also utilizes an OLED display with extensive menu selections for taking advantage of its many capabilities. As well, the URX P41D employs useful features such as a USB-C connector for permanent powering when using a cell phone charger, and also has an accurate count-up battery timer, something that can really save on battery costs over the long run. Portable receivers in the UWPD lineup also have a dedicated variable level main output, as well as a level adjustable headphone out and dedicated monitoring mode. As well, all UWPD series transmitters and receivers are compatible with one another and even allow for backwards compatibility with Sony's legacy UWP and WL800 series wireless microphone models. And finally, in the UWPD family of products, all components are made with solid construction for reliability and field use and have that great Sony fit and finish. Okay, so with that brief overview and introduction, Let's begin by getting you up and running quickly. Even though there are quite a few menu selections, we'll start off by showing you a new and very simple way to search for the best two frequencies to use and pair up two transmitters. Once that step is done, you might not normally need to go deeper into all of the unit's menus, but it's always a good idea to know what your gear is capable of. First up on the connector top panel of the unit, notice that there are independent power switches for each channel so that you can save battery life if you only need to power up one channel. 
On the front display side of the unit, you'll see a menu button which will select between four main sub-menus. Two-channel overview and utility menu, receiver channel one, receiver channel two, and external in, something we'll talk about in a bit. Also notice a set button on the left of the display, the NFC sync button, and a plus and minus button on the right for scrolling through menus and choosing specific menu choices. Holding down the set button briefly chooses that menu for modification. And the set button also then locks in your menu choice. It's important to understand that the dedicated NFC sync button on the front panel is for activating the receiver's channel scan feature, preventing one from having to go into the menu for activating this important function. All of the latest UWPD generation models have an NFC logo, which helps in easy setting and pairing up of the receiver and transmitter's channels, but we'll go into that in just a bit. As well, on the right side of the receiver, notice an infrared port. This can be used for syncing up UWPD third generation transmitters when doing a scan for open frequencies. Regardless of whether you use the NFC or infrared pairing mode, scanning for open frequencies and pairing up of your transmitters to match is the most common setting you're likely to make with this gear. After powering on both channels of the receiver, the display initially shows an overview of both channels. This screen will show the audio level for each of the signals, their group and channel numbers, the RF signal strength meter for each, and a battery level indicator. By the way, we go into more detail on the topics of channels and groups in a separate video that I hope you'll have a chance to watch entitled Channels and Groups for UWPD and DWX Wireless Microphones. But for now, notice that both channels are currently set to group 00 and are operating within the UHF TV 14 channel. They are specifically tuned to wireless mic channels 1401 and 1405 within that much larger TV channel 14's spectrum. For the purposes of this video, and for maybe following along with your own gear, it's good to be in group 00 on both channels, but we'll talk about a new all-band scanning method that can find the two best channels to operate in and sync up your transmitters to match all in one easy-to-use function. Okay, that said, let's investigate the most common setting that you'll use. How to scan for best available channels and how to sync up your transmitters to match. As finding the quietest frequencies available at each location is critical for ensuring your best wireless mic experience though, it must be easy to do and remember. Now, when it comes to scanning, it's nice to know that there are a few ways of performing the scan process and we'll look at them all. First, and the most traditional way of scanning, is when the unit follows the channel's band and group setting. This will allow the unit to scan within one of the frequency band ranges that are available, which together cover the entire spectrum range that can be received. If the group number is set to another number, it will scan only within that group's mathematically pre-tested compatible frequencies. If both of the unit's channel power buttons are on, note that by hitting the front panel menu button, you can step the unit to look specifically at only channel one's information and menu choices. Hit it again, and you'll look at channel two's, and a couple of more times, and you'll be back to the two channel view. For this video, we'll change the sub-menu to look at only receiver channel 1 by hitting the menu button once. Notice the small number 1 in the display's upper left-hand corner. This screen does give us additional information about channel 1, including the actual frequency that is being used and the strength of the diversity reception. For now, let's just power channel 1 to on. To start a scan, simply hold down the receiver's front panel NFC sync button for about three seconds and the scan will start. If in group 00, in about 15 seconds, the receiver will have scanned 188 different frequencies and it will pick the quietest one it found and the one with the least amount of background interference from other wireless sources. The OLED display will now flash black and white and all that you do then 
is hold the transmitter so that its NFC logo is directly facing the receiver's NFC logo. Move it around a tiny bit if necessary, and in a second or two, the transmitter will vibrate, letting you know that the NFC link was successful, and both the transmitter's and receiver's display will now say RX1 complete. That's it. The receiver and one transmitter are now both set to operate on the same and quietest available frequency in that frequency band. If you look back at the receiver's home display, notice that the channel strength for both the A and B tuners reads full and strong. One additional thing to mention is that our previous generation of UWPD wireless models employed an infrared or IR link style communication of the scanned channel to the transmitter. It's good to know that our latest transmitters also have an infrared receiver hidden under the top panel, just to the right of the NFC logo, and it will react to UWPD third generation receiver's IR signal. Just point the front of the transmitter towards the IR window on the receiver. If you've got two transmitters to pair up, make sure both channels are powered on, and then hit the receiver's front panel NFC sync button, again for about three seconds. Like before, after the receiver is finished scanning, it will first flash the OLED display in black and white and will say Sync RX to TX and NFC. Pair up the first transmitter by touching the two units' faces together, wait for the vibration, and then notice that the receiver's display says RX1 complete. But after a couple of seconds, we'll then read Sync RX2, TX, and NFC and prompt you to pair up your second transmitter by also facing it to the front of the receiver. After the second transmitter vibrates, looking at their respective displays, it will say RX2 complete and will then return the receiver's display to show both channels at once with their newly chosen and paired channels. And that's pretty much it. Once you practice this a couple of times, it will become second nature, I promise. Well, that's the first method for scanning, but do understand that the receiver will just scan within its assigned band. You see, a band is just a smaller range of frequencies to scan in that can keep scan times reasonable. In the case of our unit here, by going to, for example, channel one submenu, and then hitting the minus button just once, the display will say band and TV 14 to 17. If you activate this menu by holding down the set button for about a second, you can then see it flash and you can cycle through the options by using the plus or minus button. Choices here are 14 to 17, 18 to 21, and 22 to 25. These refer to UHF TV channels and each band will scan within four TV channels at a time. If you think about it though, wouldn't it be nice to be able to do a scan that looks at the entire range from UHF 14 to 25 and finds the two quietest channels that we can pair our two transmitters to all in one pass? Well, that's now possible with the URXP41D receiver. So next, let's describe the method of scanning and pairing that looks at this very wide chunk of spectrum. First off, we need to tell the receiver to operate in this scanning mode. Once changed, it will stay in this mode, by the way, for subsequent scans. With both receiver channels powered on, by hitting the front panel menu button repeatedly, make sure that the screen shows both channels at once. Then use the minus button to go to the scan type menu and hold down the set button until the word group flashes. Then hit either the plus or minus button and it will change to say all band. Hit the set button again to make it stop flashing and select this choice. In this scanning mode, your receiver will scan across all bands that the receiver can tune into. And as before, ask you to pair up your transmitters to match the two quietest frequencies it found. Let's give it a try. Again, with both receiver channels powered on, simply hold down the front panel scan sync button for about three seconds. The unit will then scan through all of its bands, in this case from UHF channel 14 up through UHF channel 25, and then flash the two quietest frequencies that it found, first displaying them by channel number and amount of undesirable background noise and dBs, 
and then by their respective frequency values. Simply hit the set button and the unit will say set frequency with RX1, RX2 flashing. In other words, it is asking you if you want to send the frequency from RX1 receiver channel to your TX1 transmitter and from RX2 receiver channel to TX2 transmitter. Hit the set button and the display will flash black to white and read sync RX1 to TX and ask you to use the NFC function. While it is still flashing, take your transmitter and face its front panel NFC logo directly in front of the receiver's NFC logo. Once they communicate, you will feel the transmitter vibrate, and that is the signal to you that the NFC pairing was successful. Looking at the receiver's display, it will then say RX1 complete, and then flash sync RX2 to TX, and again ask you to use the NFC function. Then hold up the second transmitter for NFC pairing, and it will also vibrate. And then the receiver's display will say RX2 complete, and then return to the main two-channel display view. If you're following along with your own units, you may have to try this a couple of times to get this before the units time out, but once you have it, it should make perfect sense. And with that, you're done. Both receiver channels and respective transmitters are now tuned to two great frequencies, and you're good to go. By the way, when after scanning, as discussed in the last step, and the unit suggests the two best frequencies to use, if for some reason you're not happy with the two frequencies it suggested, you can hit the plus button, and the display will read another band. At this point, hit set again, and the unit will suggest another two frequencies that are good to use or hit the minus button to cancel. You can keep repeating this another band process to look at even more additional pairs of suggested frequency pairs until you're happy. Well, that's it for an overview of the URX P41D's basic features and scanning functions. Since this fourth generation UWPD dual channel receiver has added quite a few new features and they all deserve explanation, We'll concentrate on the rest of the unit's menu operations in the next video. By the way, if you'd like additional information on any of our Sony professional audio products, just go to pro.sony/audio. And thanks for watching.